Space weather put on one heck of a show last night, and it looks like we may do it again tonight. Who's going to have cloud covers that could ruin the show? Let's talk about it in this hump day edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Hi there, and thank you for joining us on the 11th of November, 2025. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Boldy and Chief David Reimer. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to pop on in for some Texas weather information. I hope you got to enjoy the Northern Lights or Aurora last night. Uh, It was definitely quite a show down here in Fredericksburg, Texas in the Hill Country. I haven't even been able to see them with the naked eye, which is astounding to think of, but you know... Uh, It's always nice to have a nice surprise like that. So let's talk about it. And let's talk about the forecast for this afternoon and tonight. Last night's show was a high-end G4 on a scale from 1 to 5, 5 being the highest. So it was definitely up there in terms of intensity. And that's why we were able to see the northern lights all the way down to Interstate 10. And even farther south across parts of the southern and southeastern United States. Today, we are still in the midst of that uh, geomagnetic storm. Uh, If it wasn't the middle of the day, we'd probably be able to see some northern lights on the northern horizon, but that's not going to happen in the middle of the day. The Space Weather Prediction Center is expecting another surge to hit around noon eastern today, which will probably knock us back up into G4 territory. But again, we're not going to see northern lights during the day here because of the sun. Going into tonight, if we are still able to keep the uh, geomagnetic storm underway, if we're able to get a substorm to kick in after sunset, we definitely could have another round of northern lights visible across not only parts of Texas, but of course the United States. So it's really just going to be a matter of timing for this. If, you know, the main substorm and storm hits during the afternoon hours, well, we're not going to see it just because it's sunny out and bright. If it hits tonight after sunset, yeah, we could definitely see another round of northern lights. So let's take a look. Are we going to have to have to deal with clouds? Well, going into this afternoon and evening, we may have a few upper-level clouds south Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, Rio Grande Valley, maybe a couple of clouds southeast Texas. The rest of the state looking decent. We could see a few pockets of upper-level clouds panhandle west Texas. Going into Thursday, upper-level clouds will increase panhandle west Texas with some pockets south Texas, southeast Texas as well. We may also have to deal with localized dense fog beginning tomorrow morning and again Friday morning. Hill Country, South Texas, South Central Texas, and Southeast Texas. Even pockets of the Hill Country up into the big country in North Texas as we start to see those humidity values increase. Uh, And, well, don't be shocked if we have some fog in low-lying areas tomorrow morning and Friday morning. No real rain expected over the next couple of days. Today, high fire danger, eastern two-thirds of Texas, not as high as yesterday. Thursday and Friday, we're expecting the possibility of moderate fire danger across most of the state. Taking a look at the upper air jet stream pattern from the European Weather Model Ensemble, you're looking around 18,500 feet above sea level, halfway up the atmosphere, 500 millibars. Uh, A couple days ago, we were talking about storm chances across the eastern half, eastern two-thirds of Texas, as a potent upper-level storm system was going to kick in here around Sunday and Monday. Uh, But we had to wait and see how data was going to come together, and it looks like the solution now that is generally agreed upon is that upper-level storm system is going to move farther north across Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, meaning down here in Texas, unfortunately, it looks like it's going to pass too far north to really give us much in the way of precipitation chances on Sunday and Monday. So storm chances have gone down considerably. They're not completely zero, but the risk of severe storms has decreased, and the overall chance of a good widespread soaking has decreased as well. So beyond that, that means Saturday and Sunday looking more dry. Uh, Monday, and we still may see isolated storms, eastern third to the eastern half of Texas. And then the middle and latter half of next week, another storm system could kick in, and that may bring higher rain chances. Overall, that one has a decent amount of both deterministic model, individual weather model runs, and ensemble support, where each subset of those models is uh, 
kind of congealing on the similar solution right now, which, I mean, means Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Right now, it does look like a cool front and maybe some shower and storm chances with the best chance of rain eastern half of Texas. And that's not me saying we're going to get a lot of rain or widespread rain. It's just the best chance of rain now over the next week, uh, unfortunately. So you can see that depicted here. And, well, that's just what we're going to have to deal with, unfortunately. Forecast rain totals from the Weather Prediction Center. This is through 6 a.m. Wednesday, the 19th. And you can see really the only chance of a quarter inch of rain or more. Uh, North Texas, Northeast Texas, East Texas, Southeast Texas. The rest of the state looking pretty dry. And again, this is mostly out towards the end of the forecast range. So things will probably change. I mean... Who knows, maybe it'll go back to dryer and a popcorn fart. But at least, you know, we have something to look at right now. Forecast high temperatures in the next several days. Today, back up into the quite warm category for mid-November. Highs running 10 to 20 degrees above average for mid-November. And that means 70s and 80s across the state this afternoon with comfortable overnight lows. Tomorrow, it's even warmer. 80s back into West Texas, record high territory. Uh, we're looking at almost low 90s, South Texas. Friday, mid to upper 80s, big country, northwest Texas, through the Trans-Pecos, the Permian Basin, coastal plains, hill country, South Texas, Rio Grande Plains, Rio Grande Valley, southeast Texas. On Saturday, 70s and 80s, so if you're going to a football game, good news, it's going to be warm, and the weather will be pretty nice. And then going into Sunday, we start to see a cool front move into the panhandle, knocking temperatures down a little bit, but still above average for mid-November. Everyone else, we're in the 80s with 90s back across South Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, so uh, seasonably hot for November. Long-range outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Uh, they're leaning towards above average temperatures through November 21st, and Precipitation-wise, optimistically, it is looking wetter than average uh, heading into the second half of next week. But, I mean, look, we'll see. I'm not going to sit here and guarantee you it's going to rain because that's just a good way to make Mother Nature pull it out from us again. But the overall pattern, the way we're looking the second half of next week and into the week after that would technically and typically favor a stormier pattern above average rain chances. But, you know, at this point, seeing is believing, and <laughs> we'll wait to see if that's actually what happens. So that's it for your Wednesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Hopefully we can time some of those substorms in the uh, Space Weather Department well enough for another Northern Light show tonight, and we'll be keeping a close eye on that. For most of the state, we will be in a good position to view that once again. So thank you to everyone who sent in those photos last night. Absolutely amazing. It was amazing to not only for me get to go look outside here in Fredericksburg and see Northern Lights, but, you know, get, you know, five to ten photos a minute for hours on end last night as well. That was certainly an interesting way to have the uh, phone and app notifications go off. Uh, hopefully we can do it again tonight because that really is a pretty awesome sight. We'll be back on Thursday with your next edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. And that's all she wrote. Y'all have an amazing day and God bless.